In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deal with situations where we need to track a subject behind an obstruction like this. This is a common issue and there are a few different ways to do it. So assuming you want to track his face, you could use two instances of Slice X or Paint X. In that case, you would adjust your settings and track from here forward in one plugin instance, then copy paste another instance of the plugin onto the clip and track again from here forward. We won't actually show that as it's the same as you would normally track, it's just breaking it up into sections. So instead, I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to do all of that in one plugin instance. Okay, so here we have a blur shape mask effect. Let's turn down the blur and then we're going to draw a new track shape. In this case, a shape like this covering the front and a bit of the side of his face will track quite well. Hit enter to close the shape and then hit the track forward button. So we stop the track as we can clearly see that the track can't keep up, as the tracked area is now completely obscured. So what we will do first is to delete the bad track frames. Move the playhead to the last good frame before it, start <clears throat> before it starts going behind the column, and select Delete Track Data Forward. We could also delete each of the bad frames one by one, but in this case we want to delete everything forward from this point. We can see that the timeline indicator here changed to show that there's no longer any track data. I deleted it after this point and you'll see the shape just stays where it is when we play back. You'll also see that if I go back a frame, this yellow diamond also shows that there is track data on this frame, and then disappears when I step forward. So with the polygon shape layer selected, we need to choose Shape Keyframes Enable Animation. So what this does is it keyframes any modifications we make to the shape points without affecting the previous tracking data we created. Again, there's a yellow dot here to show that we've added a shape keyframe. So now we can scrub the timeline to where we can clearly see the complete face again. We then modify the shape by dragging those points down to move the shape back into place. We can also hold the shift key and drag with the mouse to select multiple points to edit at the same time. We can now see a new yellow keyframe indicator appears on the timeline and in the settings panel to indicate where the shape keyframes have been set. If we scroll back, we can now see that the shape mass still moves along with the track motion and then continues to move based on the shape keyframes. Let's go to the last shape keyframe on the timeline and then we can now track forward again. Okay, so now we have one track for the whole clip in a single plugin instance. So if we're using that track for, say, the blur shape mask effect, then you don't want it to blur the column. So what we need to do is to keyframe the opacity of the polygon shape layer. So we add a keyframe here at 100%, then step forward and add another keyframe and make it 0%. We do the same as he exits from behind the column. We had a keyframe of 0% opacity, then step forward and bring the value back up to 100%. So then the mask polygon shape effect will turn on and off as the subject passes behind the column. And in the end result is we have one blur shape mask in one plugin instance that continues before and after the obstruction. Please download the trial version of SliceX4 if you have not already.